Hello everybody, Professor Barth is here, history professor at Arizona State University. Welcome again to History of Money. We are now at lecture nine. Today for part A, we're gonna take a look at credit and usury in medieval and Renaissance Europe. Part B, banking in Renaissance Italy. And then part C, we're going to proceed forward in history to a very, very brief look at the Northern Renaissance and a new silver coin called the Taller that arose out of that, the rise of the Ottoman Empire and Portuguese exploration. Okay, so in Lecture 8, and if you haven't seen Lecture 8, you're going to want to do that because it's at the context here. We, we, we took a look at the Italian Renaissance, Italian commerce, Italian merchant middlemen. A middleman is an int economic intermediary between producers and consumers. And because of all the changes going on in Italy, there's, because of the diversity of coin in these Italian city-states, there's a demand for money changers. Because of the long-distance trade, there's a demand for the safe transport of money, which leads to bills of exchange. And so for Lecture 8, Part B, we took a, a more in-depth look at bills of exchange. Commercial prosperity in Italy leads to a demand for credit. A demand for credit. And here's a creditor or um, uh, a man who's also in, involved in some money changing, probably, in Italy around this time. And to remind ourselves, we talked about this in a, a lecture way back, the interest rate is... Uh, the price of borrowing money, or you may call it uh, the price of credit. And in a free economy, now not all economies are free, or perhaps in credit markets, there's a lot of intervention. In our own credit markets in this country, there's a lot of intervention, um, namely by Federal Reserve policy. Some of the supply and demand still dictates some, some uh, play some role in interest rates, even in the U.S., but in a economy with little regulation, the interest rate is determined by supply and demand. Supply of loanable funds on one hand and the demand for loanable funds and the equilibrium, equilibrium is about where you're gonna have the interest rate. If the supply of loanable funds shifts to the right, what's gonna to happen to the interest rate? Well, there's more money available for lending, therefore the interest rate or the price of borrowing money will go down. On the contrary, if uh, if the supply curve remains the same, but the demand for credit rises, shifting the curve, the price, the interest rates will go up. So it works like um, any any other price. Now we've already noted how in Islam to the current day, charging interest on a loan is. A, uh, a sin is prohibited. Well, the Roman Catholic Church in the medieval period, and actually to the present day, though it's no longer enforced by Rome or terribly emphasized, prohibited what they called usury. Usury. Now, usury has a negative connotation to it. By usury, when we hear usury, well, there's two senses in which the word usury might be used. In one sense, usury meant charging any interest at all. So charging 5% on a loan would still have been usury because you're charging interest on the loan. And that's what opponents of usury meant by that word during this period. Nowadays, when you hear usury, it usually means excessive interest. So if you, if uh, a credit card companies, for example, people will make the argument, I think, you know, not a bad argument that many of these companies, companies are charging usurious rates. What they mean is not that they're charging an interest rate, uh, but that it's just an excessively high interest rate. But in this day and age, usury meant just a blanket um, description of charging interest on a loan. See uh, a man here dealing with a money lender. On the right, a medieval depiction of Christ driving the money changers out of the temple and some so so some christians found some sort of condemnation of usury in, in in christ driving the money changers out of the temple of course there are alternative interpretations of that uh, but at the time it was seen as as some support now this did not prevent in medieval days christians from uh, partaking in investment 
as we'll see in part B, there are banks in Italy run by uh, nominal Christians, whether or not they were actual Christians, it depended on the person. But those banks do not charge interest. Rather, it was more like an investment. And I went into this a bit um, in our discussion of Islamic views on, on money lending. And the, the idea was if you are uh, lending out your money or it, it's, it's taking an, an equity stake in whatever the venture is, you, might, you may share in a profit, but you also must share in the risk. And so if the venture ends up going bad or failing, you also must assume part of those damages because you essentially invested in that venture. Whereas money lending, as we think of it today in an age with interest, um, the, even if you know you borrow money and you lose it all, you know you made a bad, maybe it was, it sounded good, and but the business failed. You have to pay back that money. You have to pay back every dime of that money plus interest. And the Roman Catholic Church in this, at this time prohibited that. Uh, the idea was that if you want to invest money, um, again, you have to share in a risk, but to, to invest money and then expect it to be returned regardless of whether or not the venture is successful, that's immoral. Quite immoral, actually, because essentially what you're doing, the argument went, you're making money simply by the fact that you have money. Um, you are not exerting any effort or work. There's no industry involved in it. You simply had money and you lend it out and you're going to make money no matter what happens, even if the person borrowed from you is is uh, is ruined. And, and that was seen as quite immoral. And, and to this day, many people across the world, not just in the Islamic world or even in the Roman Catholic world, have argued that the system is uh, there's some sort of something inherently immoral about it. Thomas Aquinas, the famous medieval philosopher slash uh, theologian, a, a Roman Catholic, argued that, quote, to live by usury is exceedingly unnatural. So the idea is that there, there's something unnatural about uh, uh, lending out money and and because, again, you're not actually producing anything, right? The argument, the argument went. It's uh, it's unjust. And because you're taking something that by its nature is sterile, money, it's just sitting there, right? It's just sitting there. And now you're going to make, you know, five, 10, 15% from it. There's something unnatural or immoral about, about doing that. Now the counter arguments in favor of interest, I'm just really skimming over the surface here, says actually, you know, you say there's no work or effort involved. You say there's no sacrifice involved because money is supposedly sterile, but there actually is a sacrifice involved for the creditor, for the lender of money. The lender of money is making a sacrifice by temporarily separating himself, by temporarily losing access to his money. And economists and, and uh, uh, other theorists call this time preference, time preference. There's a uh, the theory in defense of interest argues and and I'm actually to put my cards on the table of this view argues that there is a time value of money. In other words, there is an, in fact a greater benefit in having money now rather than later. Having money now rather than later. So like let's say you know I have five thousand dollars in cash. Um, and somebody wants to borrow it from me. I can borrow that, lend this person that money. But during the, the duration of that loan, I've lost access to that money. I'm going to get it back later with interest, unless it's a close family member, right? In, in which case, I would, I would not charge interest, obviously. I guess some people would. I wouldn't. Most people wouldn't, I don't think. But if it's somebody I don't know, I'm not just going to let you borrow my money for... for nothing for me to get out of it. I'm going to get that money back, but I'm going to get it back in like a year or or even six months. So that's six months I'm without that money. So there has to be some sort of, there's some sort of, uh, I've sacrificed something in doing that. Um, even though by lending it out, I'm not necessarily 
working or producing anything directly myself, I've still sacrificed something. And so, and that's the theory in, in, in defense of, of interest. But the Catholic Church was quite um, strict about this. In fact, usurers, anyone who was uh, uh, convicted of usury was excommunicated um, by the church beginning uh, from uh, 1179 and after. There was a, a council, a Roman Catholic council in 1179 that, that ruled that usurers would be excommunicated from the church. And then at the Council of Vienna in 1311, it was declared that simply arguing that usury was not a sin, just arguing that usury was not a sin, that was condemned as heresy. So if you just arguing that is, is a heretical act. So the Roman church was very, very strict about this. I, um, when I first moved out to Arizona, I had just got my PhD. I was broke as a joke. All sorts of student debt. Still have student debt. Uh, and I needed to borrow money in order to get my U-Haul and move out here and pay the first month's rent because I hadn't gotten paid yet my new job and such. And I went to my parents and borrowed money. Um, my parents didn't charge me interest, so I'm glad they didn't. Uh, I was, they trusted that I would be faithful payback, and I'm their son. So, you know, there was no interest charge there. But for a stranger, for a stranger, this counter-argument in favor of interest, I think, is pretty strong. And just having, just ma making a matter of investment where the creditor must assume the risk of a bad investment, you're going to have a little less credit available. Some people are still going to invest, um, but credit is not going to be as available as, as it, it would be and as it is under a system of interest. So again, putting my cards on the table, I'm, I'm actually pro-interest if uh, uh, b because of the fact that you know sometimes we need to borrow money and I don't think there's anything moral, immoral or sinful about, about uh, having, attaching a price to that. My wife and I bought a home and uh, we pay a lot of interest on at home. Oh yeah, we pay a lot of interest on at home. Probably about two thirds, or maybe even more than that, three quarters of every monthly mortgage payment doesn't even go toward the principal. It just goes toward interest. I could whine and complain about that, but I made that decision and I thought it was a good decision. And at least I'm not paying rent every month to a landlord. And not that that's inherently bad either, but you know, about a quarter of the payments going toward the principal. But yeah, I'm paying a lot of interest. But you know what? I wouldn't have been able to afford the house otherwise because I don't have the cash to buy a house. Part of, That's how it works. My view, there's nothing wrong with it. All right, moving to the next topic. Usury and Judaism. Usury and Judaism. This is a topic that in the history of money, is, you, you can't avoid it. It's critically important and, and it really, really begins to rear its head sometime around the Renaissance period. So we need to talk about, we need to establish some sort of background into why, uh, into this association between finance and Judaism. But you know what? I think I'm going to, that's a whole separate subject. I'm going to do a er, and, 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 and I think this warrants this discussion because we need to flush it out a little bit. I think it warrants a, a separate video. So I'm going to stop things here and for part B, we're going to take a look at, at uh, usury and Judaism. So I hope you join me there. But I hope also that this was a useful and helpful uh, introduction to the, to the concept of credit and this controversy, uh, especially in the medieval Renaissance age, about, about usury. So tune in for part B. See you there.